एटी वर्ड्स पर मिनट फॉर टेन मिनट्स टेन सेकेंड्स मोर फाइव सेकेंड्स स्टार्ट इन दिस ट्वेंटियथ सेंचुरी वेन साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी हैव गेन्ड अनक्वेश्चनेबल सुप्रीमसी द लेवल ऑफ द इंडस्ट्रियल डेवलपमेंट ऑफ ए कंट्री हैज बिकम द यार्ड स्टिक टू बी अप्लाइड टू जज इट्स एक्चुअल डेवलपमेंट ऑल अदर प्रोग्रेस हैज बिकम मीनिंगलेस इफ ए कंट्री इज टेक्नोलॉजिकली बैकवर्ड इट इज बैकवर्ड इेस्पेक्टिव ऑफ एनी अदर एक्सलेंस इट माइट हैव अक्वायर्ड इट इज अ वेल नोन फैक्ट दट ब्रिटिश गवर्नमेंट नेवर इंटेंडेड टू डेवलप द इंडस्ट्रीज इन अवर कंट्री ड्यूरिंग प्री इंडिपेंडेंस पीरियड आफ्टर इंडिपेंडेंस द पीपल ऑफ दिस कंट्री एंटरटेन्ड हई होप्स फ्रॉम दि गवर्मेंट फॉर दि बेटरमेंट ऑफ देर लाइफ इट इज दि इंडस्ट्रियल डेवलपमेंट विच प्रोवैड्स बेसिक इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर नेससरी फॉर दि डेवलपमेंट ऑफ दि इकोनमी एज अ हॉल इंडस्ट्रियल पॉलिसी नाइंटीन हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी एट and the industries development and regulation act 1957 gave an idea of the attitude of the government with regard to the development of industries but it was only the adoption of planning in 1951 which created a favorable atmosphere for the development of industries the history of organized industry in india may be traced to 1854 when the real beginning of the cotton mill industry was made in bombay the foundations of jute industry were laid near calcutta in 1855 coal mining also progressed about this time there were the only major industries which had developed substantially before the first world war during and after world war 1 and 2 a somewhat more liberal policy was adopted by the authorities such as a discriminating protection policy which gave impetus to industrial development several industries developed and a number of new industries came up but their production was neither adequate nor diversified in character the development of the economy can be measured with the help of different criteria such as the growth rate in industrial output industries contribution to national income and industries contribution to employment a close application of these criteria divides the planned period into two distinct phases the first lasting till 1965 66 and the second following there from the economy took rapid strides during the first 3 5 year plans but slowed down later the seventh plan envisages a growth rate of 
eight percent, with some segments of industry registering a higher growth rate. But only time can unfold the future achievement, since industry's contribution to national income and its capacity to generate employment have displayed similar trends we cannot describe our industrial development as spectacular though there has been a spurt of new industrial complexes all over the country the pattern of our industrial growth was determined by the state of economy in which the british left us the british had used india as a source of cheap raw material and a lucrative market for finished products and they had not made any effort to develop the infrastructure after getting independence india immediately felt the need of capital goods and it was decided to promote the rapid growth of capital goods industries almost till the end of the third five year plan india had to import a variety of capital goods including iron and steel transport equipment and various kinds of machinery but the situation has radically changed now india is now in a position to export these capital goods even to the technologically advanced countries of western europe america soviet union etc a significant feature of our industrial development has been the phenomenal growth of the public sector this sector comprises public utility services like the railways road transport post and telegraph power and irrigation projects departmental undertakings of the central and state governments including the defense production establishments and a number of other industrial undertakings which are wholly supported by the central government the public sector now contributes about 1/5 of the share of industrial sector in the national income and the surpluses earned by it form an important source of non tax revenue of the government it also offers job opportunities to a large number of people if we aim at an accurate assessment of our achievement we should either compare our industrial growth with the growth in other countries during the corresponding period or we should measure our achievement in terms of our targets another yardstick can be to compare our achievement with our needs this kind of assessment can be quite revealing in 1947 japan was in no better a position than india if india had been ruthlessly exploited by the british and fiercely rocked by communal hatred violence and bloodshed in the wake of partition japan was laid waste 
by atomic bombs during the second world war but today japan is technologically one of the most advanced countries of the world